So I would like now to conclude with part three of a talk I began now quite some time ago and I completed two talks which didn't even begin to arrive at the point or show the relevance of the title of the talk which was pointing towards the topics of telepathy and the power of incantation. The first talk began talking with quite a lot of worldly dhammas, or worldly phenomena, and even went into technical things such as uh, the internet, which may have seemed very much off topic. The second one started to get a little bit into languages. I would like to, at this point, before I continue and now get to the nitty-gritty and the point of how this has anything to do with telepathy and what the power of incantation has to do with it at all. I would like to make a citation or a, to a, ref, a refer, reference to a documentary which can be found on YouTube which is called Before Babel which I think was a BBC documentary as we all know Babylon is a biblical myth of <coughs> where the, the God of the Bible uh, punished the people of Babylon who were prone to being dishonest with each other with the theory that if they didn't want to be honest with each other or understand each other, then they should all speak different languages. And this is actually where the word babble comes from. Your babbling uh, means senseless babble. You can't understand what they're saying. And so at that point in the, this biblical myth, everybody started speaking different languages and stopped understanding each other and began to quarrel. So... If you can find that documentary and watch it, I think all three of these talks on telepathy and the power of incantations or incantation will make considerably more sense to you. <coughs> so, to continue. Um, I came upon the way to conclude this today as I was talking to somebody and explaining how the fact that I found it very easily to learn uh, computer code and uh, web code was because uh, I seem to have a natural ability with languages and etymology and semantics and that uh, code languages and human la or communication languages for sentient beings and languages for the communication of non-sentient artificial intelligences such as a server or web server or uh, an operating system such as Windows or a Mac OS or Linux. They are both for me Kata, or incantation. Kata is what people use the word to, for Buddhist prayers and chants and also for magical spells or incantations. So I use this word for incantation, kata. For me, uh, even words or code languages have their grammar and their rules and they have, they cause effects within the parameters of the the realms they can affect or the realms they they perform duties in be it a web server or be it uh, communicating from mind to mind between sentient beings so uh, this person said mm, yeah and so my friend and uh, I said yeah but actually if you when I say it's all incantation, I really mean it in a very deep way, which can only be understood if you really see it in a deep, meditative, contemplative 
level and that actually uh, the creation of a functioning web language, let's say, let's say uh, Windows, you start with binary code which will then create something slightly more complex enough to be able to create a BIOS which will be able to help you to create a graphic interface which will allow you to create more tools to create uh, an operating system which might be Windows for example and then you can boot it and then from step to step from quantum leap to quantum leap crossing each abyss from island to island from level to level and as we all know we have seen computers and the internet and apps and tablet PCs and iPads and all of these new things which are advancing how from step to step things become created out of thin air out of concept and how concept becomes reality this becomes reality through kata, through incantation and through nama, name kata is the use of name there are hidden names there are public names and private names there are worldly names and magical names and he who knows and understands names and has will and knows how to enforce the concentration of what Buddhists call samati is focus then this would be the power to manifest an incantation and that is precisely what code languages do they create rules for the language and then the further commands, variables and other forms of grammar which can be found within that particular code language will be able to be used to create things with. This is for me no different than how that which some people conceive of as God or the firstborn or the first awakened consciousness which arose and found itself to be alone and figured a way in infinity and eternity to create the universe step by step getting rid of one problem after the other to be able to take the next step it is no different and therefore as it said in the Bible in their mythical creation a story in the beginning there was a word and this is really does not mean a word in the sense of how conditioned humans understand it rather it means nama it means uh, incantation and it means a cry a shout with a force of will and a force of knowing and a one-pointedness that is nothing other than that which humans call magical or which we condition with a word called magical and that even the oldest religious tomes come from a very few very ancient books which have not been discovered until this century and they also come from a single book both those most old grimoires and tomes which we can find which are derivatives of which all religious tomes are derivative are not religious books those ancient tomes are books of incantations magical spells or incantations to manifest and so how religions came around I am not sure, but it is a fact that the original tomes from which all of these incantations came, all of these uh, religious tomes came from, were books of incantations. And they were not books of religious rules or of mor morality, rather, they were religious, uh, they were magical or uh, cosmic stanzas and incantations.
they were psalms of heaven, hymns, perhaps space hymns, one could use a conditioned term to define them. All words tend to condition truth into some kind of concoction of aggregates, so one should take care to not fall into the illusory thought of the name of a phenomena. So these phenomena actually are nameless, and when we name them, we condition them, and it becomes illusory. But to condition it, as we do, I personally do not condition it in a religious way. I see it in a very cosmic and universal way. And I also see that which we condition ourselves to think of as sacred. Well, if there is such a thing, and there is, at least as a feeling, as sacred, then life itself and consciousness and the fact that we are living spirit beings and that uh, all beings are spiritual and that this is an unrealized fact for many people that actually even being alive in the flesh being manifest in the flesh we are still even here in this flesh spiritual beings. We will never cease to be spiritual beings, be we in the flesh or not of the flesh, be we material or immaterial, be we with the mind or with the mind and body. I believe that if we could trace history, etymology, semantics, language and the cause of language back far enough we would find that we have moved from telepathy into the complexity of Nama Dhamma the names of things and we have conditioned ourselves to fall into illusory concepts and abstract concepts of those names and made them manifest in our minds as unchangeable solid realities which are in fact not at all not at all I believe that now as international communication and social networks and the internet are bringing us closer and closer together that we will see less and less written words on our interfaces on our computer screens. We already have the share button, the email button, the download button uh, with symbols, and they are no words. On a website where a download button is a symbol and an email button is an envelope symbol, it does not matter if you are Italian, French, Egyptian, or from the Mauritius Islands, from the island of Mauritius, or the Seychelles. It does not matter if you're from Nepal or Japan, if you are English or Spanish. It matters nothing, because everybody understands such a symbol, after they have got used to it at least. As we moved from telepathy into words and speech and got lost, we are now reaching the point where we are coming back together, where quantum science is showing us the truth of that which the Buddha taught to be dependent origination, that all things are connected and are one. And as we move back towards unity, we move also back towards simplicity, oneness, the center and stillness. We move back to the source. And as we move back to the source, we move closer together in our feeling and understanding and communication. And telepathy becomes realer and realer. And as we become realer, the effect which our words 
or the things which we promised as we say them in our hearts become truly powerful incantations because we are real and to be realized is to make things real to realize something is to transform it into becoming real so to be self-realized is to realize the self and to become real and when one becomes real that which one says, does, intends becomes real so this is what I meant by telepathy and the power of incantation and symbolism telepathy and symbolism and the power of incantation lies within all of creation for it is with the power and through the power of incantation which seems to us magical is creation arisen creation is become creation has become through the power of incantation and everything within creation including operating systems like windows and including the laws of nature and everything that moves within the cosmos is such and creates itself or is created in such a manner from step to step in quantum leaps through incantation and the power of will this is a John Spencer signing off